In this video, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step processes for making this silver and acrylic pendant. I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome to my studio. I feel it's important to have a design or a plan for your jewelry project. Don't try to wing it. You can avoid many problems ahead of time simply by drawing your design. It doesn't have to be a perfectly rendered drawing. It is easier to fix a problem on paper rather than to have to tear apart and rebuild your project halfway into the build. This design incorporates several of the techniques that we have learned about in previous videos. Now we can see how these techniques are used to fabricate a finished jewelry piece. What techniques will we use in this project? We'll be using forging and texturing silver wires, sawing and texturing sheet silver, die cutting and forming silver domes, and soldering both the wires and sheet metal together. There will be a bonus in this too. We're going to form and set a mirrored acrylic dome in this section here. The next thing that you should know is to have a plan of action. Plan which techniques should be done first, second, and so on. Don't be afraid to write them down. You can always change the order as you go. What about our plan here? What should we start first? I'm choosing the circle here because that will establish the size that we want. And I'll be using this as my working drawing because this is more of the size that I want. And you'll see that I've already started to put notes over here. And so, like I said, don't be afraid to start writing notes to yourself and reminders of which gauge of wire or sheet metal that you've used. This is a great log to help you keep organized. I've decided to use 14 gauge square wire for the border of the circle area. But now I have to figure out the circumference of that area. So what I've got is some circle templates. So I'm simply going to lay this over the drawing and see which one matches the closest. So how do I know how much wire to use for going around this circle? Really simple. Take your template and put it over the mandrel. Take a marker. I'm trying to just get a rough measurement so I know how much silver to cut. And it's uh, right at four inches. So I'm going to cut a piece of sterling silver of that 14 gauge square wire to five inches. Now that we've annealed the wire and it's nice and soft, I can simply bend it around the mandrel with my fingers. The metal does have a tendency to spring and open up a little bit. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller on the mandrel, then slide it up till it's nice and tight in the area where we had it marked. And you'll notice that I've overlapped the two. I want to make a real good solder joint here and I can do that by overlapping the two wires and then sawing through the two wires at the same time and that will make a perfect solder joint. And I'll put a mark here. This is where we're going to saw it. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'd like to texture the sheet metal in the circle and I'm going to be using a chasing hammer and a nail set. The nail set has a nice little circle on the end of it which will leave a really nice texture. Now we're ready to start working on the forged wires in this part of the design. I've measured it with a small wire first to get my rough estimate of the length of these wires. And the right hand side here is 7 inches, the other side is 5.5 inches. I'm going to be using the same 14 gauge square wire as we used in the circle. And I've laid this on out after I've annealed it, so now it's easy to bend. And we'll lay it on the drawing and start bending it to shape. I'm going to be using the round nose pliers to do these hard curves. And then we'll continue forging as we go. I'll start forging the wire with my forging hammer and I'm going to use the flat peen first to make a, a flat area for me to put the cross peen on and then switch to the cross peen and get a nice wide spread on the wire. Flip it over, make sure I do the other side. And then I'm going to flip back to the flat peen and planish it out. I'm going to bend the next curve. I've already marked on my wire where I need to bend it. Hold it in the round nose and bend it around at the angle that I need. Because this second curve is overlapping the first wire, what I've done so I can forge is I've simply bent the wire out and then I'll be able to put it on the anvil and forge this area here. Because our design has texture on these wires, it's really important to try to texture them as we go because all the wires are folding over themselves. So I'm going to be texturing this wire now with the riveting hammer. Now this section we're going to reverse the wire and make a re simple reverse plane through this section. Our design calls for texture on this plane. So we'll take our riveting hammer again. This is a circle cutting die. It comes in two parts. There's a lower part with two pegs that correspond with the two circles in the upper section of the block. We put those together and sandwich the sterling silver in between the blocks and then slide our circle cutting die into the corresponding hole and hit it with the chasing hammer. This will cut a nice perfect circle for us and we'll be ready to go.
We could saw it with a saw, but this is much faster and much more accurate cutting a circle. This is a dapping block. It's a steel block with domes cut into it. And there are dapping tools that are corresponding with these sizes. We're going to be using these two holes right here and make a progression from flat sterling silver to a nice round dome. I don't want to put solder on the top part of the domes because if I overheat one or the other, the solder will flow onto that one and then I'll have to clean that off. The best way to prevent this problem is to either solder from the back or we can put a pallion of solder on the soldering block and then put the two pieces on top of the solder and then heat them up so the solder would be to the back and then there will be no extra flowage onto the front of the dome. Our next step is to solder both of the forged wires wherever they cross or touch. It's really very important to do this for two reasons. Number one, it will make the wires stronger. And number two, it'll take the vibration or the buzzing out of the wire or the piece of jewelry when it's finished. There's nothing worse than having a piece of jewelry that buzzes on you. So let's take and we'll solder these places together on both wires. Now that we have the pieces soldered together wherever they cross and touch to prevent that vibration, this is a good time to check out the pieces before we solder them all together to make sure that we do any filing or get any rough edges off them, clean the pieces up because it's a lot easier now when they're the individual pieces than when they are all together. Now let's solder these together. To solder all three of these pieces together at one time is not a good idea. I've decided to solder this forged wire to the row of domes first. I've used the same technique as we used when we soldered the domes together by putting the pallion underneath the two pieces and I'll tack it here first. And then when that's held in position, then I can turn the whole piece over and solder the rest of the domes to the forged wire. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. We're going to be soldering the forged wires and the domes, that piece, to the circle with the texture. I've used a third hand, this is a weighted base with crosslock tweezers, and held this together and raised it up so I can get the torch underneath so I can jump back and forth on the circle to the wires and get even heat. I'm going to show you a different technique of soldering. It's called stick feeding. I'm going to be feeding some extra easy solder right in the two solder joints 
when they're hot enough. I'm not too concerned about being a little sloppy in this area simply because this is all going to be covered with the acrylic dome. Same technique is you heat both sides evenly. I'm going to be soldering the sterling silver tube to the back of the pendant to allow the chain to go through the tube and to hang freely. I'm going to be using a technique called sweat soldering to solder the tube to the pendant. This is where you put solder in between the two pieces of metal that you're going to be soldering, heating them up and then essentially sweating the solder in between those two pieces and then it melts. I've already melted the solder onto the tube, so now that it is in between the two pieces, we'll heat it up and melt it. Many times when you have a piece of jewelry that has a lot of little intricate areas in it that are hard to polish, this is where this machine comes in very handy. It's a magnetic tumbler. It has a magnetic field in the base and which spins around which consequently spins the small steel rods that are in the uh, tub and that are suspended in water and soap. Let's put our piece in here. Add just a couple drops of soap. The top on. Seal tight. I'll we'll take the top off and we'll find our piece in the soap and we'll rinse this off. Well here's our piece out of the magnetic tumbler. As you can see it's really cleaned up a lot of the areas down in those little tiny cracks. It's not a mirror finish but it's a real nice bright finish. We're going to take our piece and oxidize the entire surface and then buff up all the highlights which will give nice contrasts to the textures. We're going to use a solution called liver of sulfur. This is a potassium sulfide solution which will oxidize the entire surface very very quickly. It actually reacts to the copper that's in the sterling silver and that's what will turn dark but it covers the entire surface. We can do this in two ways. We can either heat up the liver of sulfur and drop your piece into it or we can warm the piece uh, either with a torch or a heat gun and put it into the liver of sulfur. I prefer warming the piece and I prefer working with the heat gun. I don't like to use heating up the liver of sulfur because it takes a while and it stinks up the studio. Now we'll remove our piece from the liver of sulfur, dip it in some water, rinse it off, and it's totally oxidized and now we'll buff it up and hit all the highlights. Our design calls for an acrylic dome over the sterling silver circle. I've cut a circle out of mirrored acrylic with the jeweler saw and we're ready to dome it. And how do we do that? We do it the same way as we did with the sterling silver domes. We put it into the dapping block and then use our dapping tools to push down on it and dome it. The only difference between this and the sterling silver is we have to heat up the acrylic piece first, make it soft, and then I can push the dapping tool into the block and make it into a dome.
Now that the acrylic circle is domed, I'll prepare it for placement. I'll saw off the bottom of the dome, file all the edges to make the snap fit, including the back. Then give it a buffing to remove any scratches before the final placement. To set the acrylic dome, I'm going to be using a snap fit, which means that I've filed it and formed it perfectly to fit inside of the 14 gauge square wire until it snaps into position. I've also put on a little epoxy on the inside edge of it to give it extra hold. So we'll slide it in position and snap it down into position and we'll let it dry. As you can see, there are many steps involved in making that designer craftsman piece of jewelry. Especially if there are several different techniques involved in making that piece of jewelry. That's why it's such a good idea to start off with a design and to make that plan of action. That will help you avoid mistakes along the way and it will make your life so much better. I hope that you've enjoyed this video today and that you've learned something in making your own pieces of jewelry. Feel free to subscribe and so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Also, check out my channel because there are videos there describing these techniques in much more detail. I'm Greg Greenwood and have fun making jewelry. See you next time.